satellites, hospitals, and synthesizers? What's all this got to do with anyone's university career? Stick with this video for 15 minutes and you'll find out. So what about satellites? There are in fact several projects within the faculty which involve or depend on satellite communications technology. This one's an electronic engineering project which uses dishes to receive weather data direct from a satellite. And this is a testing chamber currently being used to measure the sensitivity of a satellite antenna. Meanwhile, in a statistics project, students are working to forecast the pattern of hospital admissions in the local region. This should make the provision of hospital services more efficient. And so on, up to all the hospitals in the region. As for the keyboard, it's being programmed by a computer, part of a project designed entirely by students. The question is, how do all these different activities fit together into one faculty? Unique among British universities, Kent has brought computing, mathematics and electronic engineering into a single faculty of information technology. The basic reason for doing this was to stimulate much more cross-fertilisation between these areas at a time when the barriers between them in the outside world are rapidly falling. But the faculty offers other benefits too. By combining resources, it's possible to do things like create a campus network in which students use their own micros to communicate with the university's central computers and with each other. It's also possible to offer a wide variety of well-equipped laboratories. For example, the central computing lab is one of the most advanced in the country. And what's more, in contrast to other universities, student access is virtually unrestricted. The range of courses itself is extremely wide. Part 1, which is your first year, provides a solid grounding in your chosen discipline with exposure to other subjects along the way. Many of the courses will also involve a practical project. In Part 2, the second and third years, there's a wide choice of different degree courses within your discipline. You make this choice at the beginning of your second year. With a few exceptions, all these courses will extend the interdisciplinary understanding you'll have gained in Part 1. The faculty is also the home of some important research. In this case, it's integrated circuit design work for an image processing project. Students are encouraged to get involved. And if you like the idea of studying abroad, there are tie-ups with universities in France and Germany. Certain courses will take you there for up to a year. Finally, the faculty has substantial and growing links with industry. As well as the research connections, Many students are sponsored by companies for whom they may eventually work. This offers great opportunities and is well worth considering. Incidentally, University of Kent degree courses are accredited by the appropriate professional body. Now let's look at the three component parts of the faculty in a little more detail, starting with mathematics. Here, as everywhere, there's a strong emphasis on the practical application of theoretical knowledge. This group are using polyhedra to examine aspects of geometric symmetry. By drawing so-called Cayley diagrams on solids known to the Greeks over 2,000 years ago, they discover relations in the algebra of modern group theory. As you'd expect, there's also a strong emphasis on lecture, about 12 a week in the first year, as well as supervisions, examples classes, and exercise sheets. In part one, you get an introduction to each of the main areas of mathematical study. There may be a small overlap with what you did before coming to university, but most of the material will be entirely new. In part two, covering your second and third years, the choices really open out, with broad-ranging courses alongside highly specialist ones. The courses are structured to allow you to keep your options as open as possible. Courses like mathematics and computing, or mathematics and electronics, exploit the wealth of links within the faculty, as this work on the use of solitons in microwave design demonstrates. While courses like mathematics and philosophy join up with other faculties to produce some interesting combinations. 
Mathematicians also have excellent career prospects. This is because many aspects of modern business, from investment management to corporate planning, are mathematically based. One of the purest examples of business mathematics is actuarial science, which the faculty offers as a full degree program. On the research side, the variety is just as rich. Hurricanes may not seem an obviously mathematical subject, but weather forecasting is. Here, the long-term weather predictions represented in the one diagram are compared with the actual outcome in the other. The object is to measure the similarities and differences between them statistically. Collaborative research is enhanced by the existence of the successful Applied Statistics Research Unit, which has close links with many statisticians in industry and commerce. Then there's pure and applied mathematics research, which can involve anything from software design through electromagnetics to coding theory. In fact, because mathematics underpins the theories of so many other areas of work, researchers can find themselves involved in an immensely wide range of projects. But how do some of the students find the structure and facilities of the faculty? The facilities are very good. Um, I enjoy the lecturing, the way the lectures work. Perhaps there could be more sort of close supervision of individual people, but it, I think that encourages you to work on your own, you know, to get things done for yourself. All the facilities at the, at the university are, are, are brilliant, really. I mean, you can, uh, say, late at night, you've got some, something to do in the computer lab. I mean, it's, it's open till very late, so you can always come in. And all day, uh, there's terminals all around the campus, so you can always get on at any time, really. Well, there's always somebody around. If you can't find the person you're looking for, you can always find somebody else to, to help you. Well, I, I like it very much. It's great. I like the campus and the student life down here and the town in Katzenberg is fantastic. After my second year, I took a year out and worked in industry for a year, um, which I think was something that I was lucky to be at Kent to be able to do because they're very flexible. The courses are very flexible. They're actually quite progressive as well, I think, the courses. Electronic engineering shares a similar part one with computing. There's a very strong emphasis on practical laboratory work and to facilitate this, the faculty has a number of large, recently re-equipped undergraduate laboratories. This is the digital systems lab, where students initially learn the art of turning circuit designs into working systems. It's connected to the campus network and to the faculty's main computers. And this is the electronic computer-aided design laboratory. Accessible from any workstation on the campus network, it's used, among other things, for analog and digital circuit design, the development of software tools, and the simulation of control systems. These tools and systems are then made available to undergraduates, which provides valuable feedback to the designers. The work also includes lectures and teaching in small groups. In part two, students choose from several degree options, or up to the end of the first year, they can also transfer to a parallel degree course. One of the degree options, electronic engineering with medical electronics, has its own specialist laboratory, and in their third year, students do a two-term project to design, construct, and test a piece of equipment, usually in collaboration with the local hospital. This is one example of a recent project. It's a low-cost, lightweight, computer-controlled audiometer. It's designed to run fully automated hearing tests on school children to a standard normally only possible with much bulkier and more expensive equipment. Daniel Wee, who designed it, won the Design Council commendation. Students taking the other options also have to do a project. This student is developing equipment to locate breaks in buried cables. In this other third year project, electronic circuits generate streams of pulses which simulate the functions of neurons. With these circuits, the project hopes to investigate how neurons interact in groups. You'll find that much of the research work going on is reflected in the content of the undergraduate courses. This project with British Aerospace is to develop a new type of lightweight microwave antenna. It could be a breakthrough for the British satellite industry. In the communications laboratory, fiber optics are being used to achieve very high data transfer rates for local area networks high enough to allow video and speech to be sent alongside the computer data. Whilst in this clean room, basic semiconductor fabrication is carried out in a dust-free environment
by researchers as well as undergraduates. Some of the devices being fabricated here form an important part of an astronomical microwave receiver for the Maxwell Telescope in Hawaii. And this is a revolutionary design for a distributed amplifier, which is a crucial component in phased array radar equipment. The project's a collaborative venture with Philips. But what are the things that attract researchers to Kent? And how do they find the facilities? I find it very good for research. Uh, the facilities here are very good. Uh, the building, as you can see, is an excellent one. It's got one of the largest campuses in the country. Uh, nice and open, very spacious. Uh, also, it's very, very close to France, which is becoming more and more an advantage as time goes on. The fact that research is going on in particular fields means that the teaching that students get has got a strong flavour of, of the sharp edge of technology. Um, they're not being taught straight from books. They're being taught from what is current in industry and what will be current in a year or two's time in industry. Uh, my research is in iron implantation and um, mainly concerned with uh, simulation of device processes. And uh, this involves a lot of mathematics, particularly mathematical modelling, and also a lot of computational work as well. So uh, the combination of electronic engineering with mathematics and with computing, I find ideal for my own use. I think the project work, which is carried out by students, is, is worthy of note in that they work as groups, in some cases, tackling a problem together. Um, so they can handle much more demanding projects than they could do as individuals. Uh, it's fine to provide students with all the theoretical background, but to a certain extent, effective work in industry means that you've got to have that technical knowledge, but you've also got to be able to work with people. And so consequently, working in groups in projects is very important in developing those sorts of skills, communication, other sorts of things like that. Finally, computing. Here, where technology is changing so rapidly, the basic aim is to look ahead to the skills students will need several years after graduating. As you've heard, the part one course is very similar to the one followed by electronic engineering students. In part two, the choices broaden out to make full use of the faculty's integrated approach. Some of them include a year in France or Germany. There are also courses such as computing in the humanities and computing in the social sciences, where the faculty links up with other parts of the university. As in real life, teamwork is extremely important. In the third year, you'll work with three or four other students on a group project in software or hardware engineering. The problems that have to be solved along the way, including personality differences, are a good training for the work environment after university. One such project in recent years built upon techniques learned to translate programming languages and to create computer graphics. The students developed a software package that enabled them to directly translate heraldic textual descriptions into the graphic images they represent. But perhaps one indication of the perceived quality of the training and research at Kent is the number and power of the computers themselves. These machines can be accessed 24 hours a day, seven days a week. As well as running terminals all around the campus, they're linked to other systems in the UK and abroad so that Kent is connected to most major national and international networks. This machine is one of the stars, an almost infinitely expandable MAKO computing surface which supports the faculty's work with transputers and parallel processing. The transputer is revolutionizing software engineering, and you could find yourself working with it in your first year. You'll also find some important research work going on. This software project is looking for new ways to exploit the cheap but powerful graphics workstations which are now available. This particular package won a British Computer Society Technical Award. Other projects are concerned with program verification, local area networks and parallel processing, all reflecting the rapid pace of change in the industry. Kent's Faculty of Information Technology has been designed to widen people's horizons. If you want to come here, we'd like you to be inquisitive, lively and ready to work. In return, we'll give you the means to stretch yourself right to the limits of your ability and to enjoy yourself.
I think video is very useful because it enables you in a very short period of time to show a whole range of facilities and give you a feel for what the university is like. But I think one thing that's particularly important is that, if at all possible, students visit the university because that's the one sure way of finding out whether you think that you can work in that environment for the three, three years. And considering that you've got to work hard, it's as well that you feel comfortable in the environment. For further information or to arrange a visit, please contact the admissions office, the University, Canterbury, Kent.